I might remember some things about books and I might remember nothing about books. But that doesn't mean I didn't read them. It just means I'm not going to add a lot of value to your life. So. so thank you for being here and being along for that ride. Holy smokes. Y'all. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Or welcome for the first time to my channel. I like to give you thought provoking opinions about books but sometimes you put off doing your wrap up and so you just push it to July so now you're doing June and July and you can't remember things but you rated them and you did read them so I should still be allowed to talk about them um right let's do it I'm gonna go in order the order that I read them so at least I have that straight and um, I'm gonna do all my June books and then July. June I read seven, July I read six. That makes 13, I did pass grade school math. I'm officially ready to share these books with you. I do have thoughts, I am excited to share. I just started to look at the stack and I was like, do I know you guys? Like, have I seen you before? You know, it's like that vague acquaintance feeling that you get, um, but it's with a stack of books. So let's get going. Let's just take this more as like a yes or no situation, but I will try to provide as much context as I could keep in this little noggin. It's like I start a new book, and even if I read the other book yesterday, that's out. That's out of my mind. I'm in a new world. I'm in a new universe. So be patient with me. Enjoy what I have to offer, and um, I appreciate you being here. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all those things that you would like to do, um, and I would like you to do too. So let's get started. <laughs> and unfortunately, our first read of June was a two star. It was In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. This one was a long awaited book for me. I will read anything TJ Klune writes. He wrote one of my favorite books ever. Alas, it missed just pretty much on every front for me. In this, we have a man who was raised by robots. He has robot friends, his father figure is a robot, and it is basically about an adventure um, during a time when robots rule. Boom! I gave it to you straight. That's basically what the story is about. It is a Pinocchio retelling. You, if you know Pinocchio well, that comes across pretty quickly. Basically, I did not connect with a lot of the characters in this book, and I felt like the core message was kind of missing for me. Um, they did have one character that kind of drops in and seems like he's going to impart the wisdom, but then he's out like a few chapters later, and you're like, okay, what was the point of that? To be honest, I felt like the robot characters, the two sidekicks, were annoying and it made the book worse for me instead of better. They were also like very sexualized robots. I know that's like, you're like, what do you even mean? I don't know. They like say weirdly sexual things the entire story and our main character is asexual, which they state pretty plain and simple at the beginning of the book. But then there's still romance in the book. I don't want to give too much away. I just, felt like this story, I don't know what the point of it was, and I feel like I do expect a lot from TJ Klune. I think he writes hard-hitting, like, emotional stories that usually, like, stick with me. This one, like, I just wish I hadn't picked up. That doesn't mean I won't try another story by him, and not all my reviews are gonna be this long. I just had a hard time with this one, but I know some people still loved this, and I did like the representation of, um, in the end, there's some representation for a certain character. I don't really want to give too much away because you haven't picked it up, possibly. But I would definitely try The House in the Cerulean Sea, and I would also recommend Under the Whispering Door, but this one it just was a huge miss. It was interesting, though, in his acknowledgments, my friend pointed this out to me, but in his acknowledgments, he kind of is like, this isn't the story I really had in mind but the world wasn't ready for the story I had in mind, which I kind of find interesting. So I don't know if he was like happy with his story. 
um, when it ended, or if he kind of got a lot of notes about what the story was supposed to be. So it just wasn't my favorite. The part where the action was supposed to come to play was minute when it's like the whole journey and story is building to this climax. Climax is like a chapter. And I was like, okay, I don't know why we made such a big deal about making it happen if it wasn't even gonna add a lot of value. And there was a character in here that like is introduced a little bit later and they want you to care about him. And I'm like, I don't care about him. I have no reason. I, I don't want to spread too much hate and if you loved it, that's great. I had friends who loved it. It just wasn't for me. Definitely I would pick up something else by him and in the future I'll pick up his new stuff. It's just this one really was a miss for me personally. Next I read the first in the Eden series, Indigo Ridge. This one um, is by Devaney Perry. I actually liked this one, however I didn't find it life-changing by any means. Uh, this one is on Kindle Unlimited, so that's great. I think the whole series is on there. Um, I ended up reading the first two, but I'll talk about the second one later. This one, I went in with slightly high expectations. I did watch someone review it recently before I read it, who was kind of like, mm, don't go in with such high expectations and you might enjoy it more. So I kind of was ready for that. I ended up giving it a 3.25. It's about a girl who moves to this small town and kind of gets involved with a guy who's part of the like big family who started the town, head honchos, right? They have own all the businesses, they own the major ranch in the in the area. Um, kind of gets tangled up with him. They end up butting heads because she moves there to become the sheriff and there is a dead body found. And so she's kind of searching all the avenues to figure out what happened there. The body was found on their property. So it, they kind of start butting heads. Um, but I liked the mystery aspect. I felt like the love interest part wasn't done extremely well, but I, I kind of liked the romance and mystery in tandem. And like, I like that it ties off with a bow at the end, right? This mystery. So this one I would suggest to read if you are a romance mystery reader. I felt like it was enthralling and enjoyable, but I definitely don't think it's like knocked out of the park, okay? It's not a home run, but it was still enjoyable. Next, I read The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I read a lot of books through the library and Kindle Unlimited this month, and in some ways I'm happy about that. In other ways, I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, your physical TBR is so big. Stop picking up other books. But nonetheless, I read this one. I ended up giving it three stars. This story, again, this is where I'm like, do I remember this story? Do I remember it? Um, basically, there is this app, this dating app, where you can send in your saliva and get matched with someone um, based on your makeup. Am I a scientist? No, you can get matched based on that with people you have high potential to like be with for life, right? Like they rank you. Am I making any freaking sense? Anyways, I read the soulmate equation and the founder ends up getting a gold match with our main love interest. He's broody. He doesn't really seem romantic. He's a real science guy. She is a, like, kind of the same but she's a kid she's a single mom to be real this one left no lasting impression on me I liked our main guy but I felt like they had no chemistry at all like literally a few chapters in he's like yeah she's average but then they fall in love like okay but if you guys had such a high match why is she average It was not my favorite Christina Lauren concoction. However, I did read the second one to that this month as well. So just hold your horses for me. But this one was honestly an everyday three, maybe 2.75. Let's be real. This one's probably. Next, I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is her debut novel that she released like last summer or spring. This one. I loved. I know it's a little controversial because of, well, one of the major twists in the story, uh, one of the major conflicts, and because people feel like it's very similar to 
um, like The Summer I Turned Pretty and um, Love in Other Words by Christine Lauren. I've read both of those and read this one, and I honestly like this one better than both of those. I thought this was a more mature take on the concepts from those two novels. I know a lot of people felt like it borrowed too much, but for me, I felt like they were two separate stories. My feelings might be that because I read Love in Other Words quite a few months ago, so it was like a little fuzzy in my head. This was new, but I just actually liked our male character. I liked our female character. I really liked this one. I thought her writing was great. I haven't picked up her novel from this summer. I've heard, again, controversial things about that one too, but I thought she knocked it out of the park. I really did. I like, I, the first 50 pages I think were slow for me, but after that, I read it in like a day. So I thought it was great. And all the haters can feel however you want to feel because we all get to have our own opinion. See, that was a 4.5. She's a 4.5 for me. Next, I read the second book in the Eden series, which was Juniper Hill. This one is about the brother of our main man from the first book. So he's part of the Eden family as well. And this woman, Memphis, moves to town with her son. You don't know why she's a single mom at first, but basically she had to leave with her son and she's trying to make ends meet all by herself. She's having a hard time. And um, our love interest, forgot his name, but our love interest, he is going through his own personal um, problems and they kind of come together and support each other. This is where I decided I was going to stop reading this series. Unless one of you guys says like one of the later ones is a really standout. This was a 2.25 for me. I just didn't get a lot of depth from their relationship. And I think without having another thing at play, like the first one had a mystery at play, that helped significantly move the plot for me and make me care. This one just felt like... I don't know, it was just kind of like, oh, like he doesn't like me. Oh, now he does like me. I like him. Now I'm just gonna move in. Like, this girl, I, I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even think I'm tracking. And then the last like 20, 15%, I mean, it read really quickly, but crazy crap starts happening. And you're like, you're just gonna throw that all at the end? This, it just was not my favorite. I was not overly impressed again. If you guys really liked one later in the series, like I'm not saying I wouldn't pick it up. I'm just saying I'm putting that on a, a pause for potentially ever. So moving on. Next, The Extraordinary Adventures of Arsene, Arsene Lupin. I don't speak French. This book, um, I read this for my book club. We are doing mysteries right now. So we gave this one a go. I ended up giving this a 2.5. Um, it's definitely like older writing style, right? It's quite an old novel. Um, but what I really liked from it is a lot of tropes came from this, like a lot of mystery tropes um, came from these original stories. Each chapter kind of reads like a short story about Arsene Lupin. He is a thief and it just shows how he gets away with things. Um, a lot of them were really interesting, like I, I really like the one where he sends a message, I forget which chapter this one is, but it was that classic, like he sends a message to this guy saying, I'm gonna rob you and steal all these like priceless items you own. And the guy's like, I don't even know how he knows I own all this stuff, but he's in prison. How is he gonna get out and steal all this? And of course, like he succeeds and steals it, even though he tells the guy the date and time he's gonna steal it. So I just love that trope, that heist thing. So this one is like, if you want to go back to the old ages, the stone ages, and get kind of an idea of where some of those tropes started, I thought it was really fun to get a peek behind that curtain. And yeah, it was a 2-5. Like, of course, the writing was a little bit hard to get into. Not all of the chapters were interesting to me, but I really liked the core of it. Next on the docket is something we touched on earlier. This one is the True Love Experiment. Christina Lauren. This is the second one in the soulmate equation duology. Um, this one it just is about the best friend. So they're kind of companion novels, if you will. This one is about Fizzy, who is our main character's best friend. She is a romance novelist and she ends up going on a dating show. 
um, where she gets to date a bunch of men who represent different tropes. She kind of joins forces with a man who usually does nature documentaries and he's kind of put on this reality TV stint that he doesn't really want to be a part of and they end up working together but sparks fly between them when she's supposed to be dating the men on this show. This one was great. Like this one was super enjoyable. Banter was great. He's a British man. Our main character, I was like, okay, say less, Christina Lauren, say less. This was really fun. I'm gonna give it a 3.75. I really did enjoy this. Um, towards the end, I was kind of like, let's wrap it up because this is a 400 page book. But I really enjoyed the characters and you could feel like the chemistry, like the chemistry was coming off the pages there. It wasn't in the first one. Y'all, we did it. We got through June. We got through June, but now we need to talk July. This month, I read six books, and then I DNF'd another book at 30%. Sometimes that's just how it goes, right? So, first I read Bad People Summer. This one was interesting. I think I did a vlog last week talking about it. I think I just uploaded that. This one is basically someone dies in this like beach community where people all vacation there in the summer from New York. There's chapters from like all of these different people's point of views. They're all going through something, affairs, trouble at work, trouble with their families. Like they all have things going on, um, like financial issues that they're keeping under the surface, right? To like look good in this community. I would say 60% is just drama between these people. Drama, drama, drama. And then the murder wraps up in like two chapters, which is fine if you're there for the drama. If you want to see like reality TV, but you want to read it, it's good for that. Like it was entertaining in a lot of ways, but I wanted the murder to be a bigger part of it. And it's definitely just like a dramatic beach town with a sprinkle of murder. So I think if you knew that going in and that's what you wanted, you might enjoy it more. I ended up giving that one a two five. After I finished that, I listened to The Inmate by Frieda McFadden. This is my second Frieda McFadden book and well did it blow me out of the park. This one, I was like compulsively listening to. I ended up listening to this one. I could not put it down. I was like, I got to wrap this story up. I gotta know what happens. It was a four star. It was almost flawless. There was just a few things I didn't love. And I know this one kind of is either people love it or don't. So keep that in mind. But I really liked it. It was interesting. It was captivating. And it made me scared. Frida didn't have to do that to me in that last chapter, but she did. So you know what? It was good stuff. I can't wait to pick up another Frida. I've read um, The Housemaid by her as well. So, and I liked this one more than The Housemaid. So that's just my two cents on that one. Um, if you have another Frida McFadden that you think I should push to the top of the list, let me know. Cause that one was really enthralling for sure. Next, I read The Summer I Turned Pretty. I did talk about this in my vlog um, recently. Mm, how do I not make the book girlies mad with my thoughts? This is written for very young YA, very young, young, young adults. This is written for 12, 13 year olds. And for me, and for that reason, it was a miss. <laughs> it was a no for me, dog. Um, I definitely think the show's better, although I do have thoughts on the show, but I'm gonna leave those out of this. This is just a book review. I did read Jenny Han's To All the Boys I Loved Before when I was like 14 and I loved those because I could really connect with some of those feelings. Some of this I'm just like, y'all acting like children. And then I'm like, wait, you are children. So that's my thoughts. I have started the second one. I think I'll read the whole series cause I own them, need to get through them. But I, I don't think there are ones that at my stage in life, I'm extremely interested in, unfortunately. Next, I picked up another mystery for my book club. This one was Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder. This is like kind of an introduction to the cozy mystery genre. For me, 
This one ended up being a two star. I did not love this one. Um, I did not like our protagonist in this story. Basically, there's a murder in her town. She owns a little cookie store and it has recipes for cookies throughout. I thought that element was cute. However, I just felt like usually I like our protagonist to be a little more of a detective type or get themselves into trouble because they're snooping a little too much. Like I like kind of a Nancy Drew, Scooby-Doo kind of person, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, like being very intelligent or, you know, putting stuff together. Um, I just didn't like her. She was kind of mean. And they say a lot of out-of-pocket things in the story. Like, I know it was written a long time ago. I think this is the first one she wrote. And she's written millions since. But I just didn't like how she would say things like it was a fact. She's like, wow, Bert is so ugly. I'm surprised he's even married. Anyways, time to go talk to this person. And maybe that's how, like, a cozy is supposed to be. And they're, like, just talking to people to put two and two together. But for me, I was just like, I'm just not having a good time, y'all. I rallied, but I'm not having a good time. So those are, are my thoughts on that one. <sighs> harsh, harsh thoughts from me. Next on the list is You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. Holy crap, this one was good, you guys. I could not put this one down. It's like under 300 pages. It's a quick read. It reads like a slasher film. And if you like classic slasher thriller films, this one is for you. I loved it. Some people might not. It's definitely a slasher. It's definitely scary spooky. It is YA though. So keep that in mind too. But I thought it was scary spooky. And I was obsessed with it. I was obsessed with it. It was a 10 out of 10. Well, I gave it a, a 4.5 because there were a few elements that like, uh, it just didn't give me that five star feeling, but it was so good. If you like scary, spooky horror and want to give it a go, you should. It's such a fast read. Like, you could read it in a sitting. I do not know what else to say. Okay, actually, <laughs> let me give you the premise. <sighs> As if I have done that for any of the books so far. I haven't. I should have given you guys the premise for the in my... Well... You know, you win some, you lose some. Okay. You're not supposed to die tonight. This one is about this camp where people come for the day to get scared out of their minds. They kind of play out a slasher film at the camp. You know, they have the different roles of the actors there. So there's a final girl, there's the crazy killer, and people pay to go be at the camp all day and get to experience it and try to escape the killer, right? But then, Spooky, scary stuff starts happening for real. It was really good. I want to look at this author's backlist, see what else she's got going on because I really enjoyed myself. You know what, y'all? I'm going to bump this one up to a 4.75. Again, obsessed, love, can't wait to look at her backlist. She needs bumped up to a 4.75. Not quite that five star feeling, but pretty darn close. All right, the last book that I read this month was Book Lovers, Emily Henry. If this book is your lifeline, you might want to plug your ears. You might not, you might want to click off now. Because this one was not everything to me. Now, let me say it's still a 3.75. Not a bad review by any means. But Emily Henry is a goddess among men, right? So, it's hard to give it that rating and not feel as passionately about it as I do Happy Place and Beach Read. But I gotta be honest about a few things that just didn't sit right with me in this book. My book bestie, she's also my real life bestie, is going to be so mad at me for this rating. This is like her favorite Emily Henry. So I love that for you guys. Literally love it for you guys. It just wasn't that for me. Um. Charlie Lastro, let's just say that's not my man. I don't know what it was, you guys. I felt like he wasn't given a lot of depth for me. Like, I don't know why. Like, he just wasn't it for me. I think it's as simple as that. He just wasn't the man for me. I feel like they're like, yeah, like, 
he's in this tough situation and it sucks. But like I didn't that didn't really tell me about him. But I don't know, I guess they do like she gives him background. It's just like he's not my man. Again, there was a lot of focus on that sister relationship, and I just couldn't relate to that. And I just didn't care too much about it. And I felt like Libby was underdeveloped as a character. Wasn't my favorite. I also am not a city girl. So I was like, I don't really care about your city life. So I don't, you guys, I literally don't know what it was. But I will tell you what did work. That one scene when they got in the lake or whatever, that worked. The banter between them, the emails between them. Oh my gosh, they're witty, funny, hilarious. But I just didn't feel like they ever hated each other. Like I know it's rivals maybe to lovers instead of like enemies. But it just wasn't totally there for me. And um, I do hate to say that because I love Emily Henry. Again, I was kind of feeling a little slumpy this month. Like maybe it just wasn't the right time for me to pick it up. But it just, it wasn't it. And I still love you girlies who love this. And I hope you can still love me for not having it as my number one. Okay? Thank you all for sticking around, for living through this with me, for reaching into the depths of my brain to bring out what I remember about these books. I really enjoyed it. Again, I just gotta tell y'all, I'm a nice person. My vlogs, I'm happy, cute, silly, funny. But when it comes to my reviews and my wrap-ups, I can be a harsh biatch. Um, and that's just how I roll, and that's just how I live, but I want to know what you guys thought of these books. And if you loved a book I hated, I love chatting about it. Like genuinely, I love to hear what people loved about books I hated. You know what I mean? Because I just love how there are books out there for everyone, right? Like we all get something different when we read. So I love getting to share those experiences with you guys. So drop below in the comments your favorite book you've read so far this summer and your least favorite. Because that'll help curate my August TBR for me. But without further ado, it's been it's been a couple months of reading for sure. And I read a lot on my Kindle. She got her miles put in. So there's a little stack for you. But I just appreciate you being here. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully August is even more lighthearted and fun, okay? But until then, I'm going to love you and leave you. Cheers. Mm -hmm.